Hello everyone. Welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson number seven, we'll be looking at what we call a for loop. A for loop is a set of code that repeats as many times as we want. It's different from the games loop because we can write it ourselves and customize it to work how we want rather than just going every frame. We're going to use a for loop to create more floors, but instead of writing the same four lines over and over again, we'll get the for loop to do that for us. In the game start, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom, and I'm going to create a for loop. First, we write the word for, and you notice how it turns purple because it is a keyword recognized by Pixelpad. Next, we need to create a variable, an integer. I'm going to call this one number. Next, we say in range and inside two round brackets, one comma four. And then finally, we end it with a colon, just like how we do for an if statement. Now, once again, number is just a variable that we named. We can call it any name we want. It could be Bob, for instance. Next, we're saying in range one comma four. A range is a set of numbers. In this case, you'd expect the range of numbers to be from one to four, but it's actually slightly trickier than that. I'll explain over in Sketchpad here. When we create a range of numbers, it does start at the first number. So the first number is one. However, it counts up until it reaches the next number, but it doesn't include it. So in this case, even though it says four here, the range is only the numbers one, two, three. Similarly, in this range, we start at the number zero and we include one, two, three, and four, but we do not include five. Next, let's look at how a for loop actually works. Let's look at the for loop again and actually put some code inside it. Right now, it doesn't do anything because we haven't added any code. For now, let's print a simple message. You can say any message you like, but I'm going to keep it simple with a hello. Notice when I hit play, in the console below, I have three hellos. Let's try changing the range and see what happens. If instead I say a range from one to seven, how many hellos do I see? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six. The for loop has repeated six times, printing that hello message. So how do we know how many times the for loop is going to run? Well, it's based off of this number variable and this range. Instead of printing a message like hello, let's try printing number and see what happens. As you can see, the console now shows one, two, three, four, five, six. That's all the numbers that we have in the range. So what's going on there? Let me explain that in Sketchpad. Here, I have three different for loops, all working in the same way as the for loop in our code. I have a different name for the variable in each one, but in each case, I'm using that variable in the print message. The result is the same. Here, when we create the for loop, we are setting num equal 
to the first number in the range. So here num equals 4. So when we start repeating the code inside, we're going to start with the message 4. After that, the for loop increases our variable by 1 and then repeats the code inside. So the next time we print num, num is actually going to equal 5 now. So we get the message 5 in our console. And then once more, it increases num again to be 6, and then 7. And now that num is equal to 8, it stops. So the only thing we're going to see in our console is 4, 5, 6, 7. In another example here, i starts at 0. So the first message is going to be 0. And then the next time the for loop runs, i will equal 1. The next time it runs, i will equal 2. And then now that i equals 3, the for loop stops. And then in this large example, Bob equals 1. So we're going to see 1, and then 2, and then 3, and all the way up to 9. Because once Bob equals 10, the for loop no longer runs. The easiest way to tell how many times a for loop is going to run is to subtract the small number from the big number. As an example, 8 minus 4 equals 4, and our code ran 4 times. Here, 3 minus 0 is 3, and we got 3 runs of code. 10 minus 1 is 9, and then we got all the numbers from 1 to 9. Whenever you're creating a for loop, you want to keep that in mind. If you want the code to run three times, make sure that your numbers subtract to three. In the for loop in my pixel pad, I'm going to use the numbers zero and five. So this for loop is going to run five times. And instead of just printing a message, I'm going to create a new floor. So in order to add more floors, I'm going to call this one new floor, and it's going to equal the floor class still. It's also going to use the same sprite as the other floors. So I want to say new floor dot sprite equals sprite grass tile dot png. Let me expand that a little bit so we can see the whole line. There we are. Next, I'm going to position the new floor over to the right side of the screen. So I'm going to say new floor dot x equals 300. And let's see where that positions it. Yep, that seems like a good position over there. And I'm going to say new floor dot y equals negative 100. All right, so now it's lined up with the left side on the y axis, but it's all the way over to the right. So we would need to jump up and then across. Now, you might be wondering why there aren't five floors. Since our for loop ran five times, we should have ran all four lines five times. Well, the answer is it did work. The problem is that all five floors are right on top of each other. So how do we fix that? Well, remember this number variable? We can use that inside the for loop, just like we did when we were printing it. And in this case, let's try using it as a number and add it to a different number. When I position the x-axis, I'm going to add number. 
and let's see what that does. As you can see, the blocks have shifted just a tiny bit. That's because number is such a small number, it's either from 0 to 4, it's not really noticeable in our game. But let's try multiplying it. Let's try making it bigger, let's say by 10. Now one thing to note is that when we're using multiplication in code, we use the asterisk symbol instead of an X, because we often use the letter X for other things. If you're looking for the asterisk symbol, it's shift eight. So here we're multiplying the number by 10 and then adding it to 300 to get the final X. And there it is. Look, it's much better than it was before but it's still not there. Now over in Sketchpad, I have the same code as I have in Pixelpad, and I'll explain it step by step. The first time the for loop runs, we create a new floor, we set its sprite, and we set its x equal to 300 plus number times 10. The first time the for loop runs, number is equal to zero. So when you say 300 plus zero times 10, it's really 300 plus zero. And our first block ends up at the x value of 300. Next, when the for loop runs again, it increases number by one. So instead, when we get to this line, number now equals one, and it's 300 plus one times 10. And one times 10 is 10, so the next block appears at an x value of 310. And it keeps going like this until the for loop ends. all the way when number equals four, and our final block ends up at an x of 340. Now, as you can see in our game, the blocks are not spaced out like mine are here in Sketchpad. They're still rather jumbled together. We need this number 10 to be the same size as the tile itself. We need to figure out how many units across this tile is. So let's try some numbers and find it. I'm going to try 30 and see if that works. Nope, 30 is still not big enough. How about 50? 50 is still not big enough. Let's try 100. Ah, I'm very close. But 100 is too big, you can see a gap between the two tiles. Let's try 90. And look at that, the tiles look just like our first two. And we can see all five of them, even though the fifth is going off the screen a little bit. We'll look at being able to see that one in the next lesson. And just like that, you can have as many floors as you like. All you have to do is change the range. Now, one thing you can do, if you like, is use negative numbers in a range as well. If I say negative one to five, I should see one more tile show up over here. And look at that, it works. I'm going to change it back to zero just to make this for loop look a little less scary. An alternative way you can do that is just producing the first number here. If I instead put it at 210 to begin with, I'm still going to get five floors. They're just going to be shifted to the left by 90 units. And look, we can see all five blocks here now.
go ahead and try different numbers, either in the range or in your calculations, and see how it changes. If you want, you can also change the y value, either by the flat amount or by the increasing number. That's it for this lesson. In the next one, we'll look at how to move the camera along with the player, and we'll also look at adding rooms to create new levels. I'll see you there.